Well, well, well. If it isn't another BND bonus here on the Black Print Network with A plus to your left and MC here to your right. Thank you so much for pulling up with us on the Black Print. As always, A plus, how you feeling, yes, man? Usually I'd be like, it's been a while since we caught up. We just saw you last week. Yeah, no, it's been good, man. You know, we just like you said, we just chopped it up on the Black Print and uh everything's good, man. Just you know, we're getting into the depths of fall. We just talked about Halloween a little bit behind the scenes. It's been so long since I ever thought about going to a damn haunted house, by the way. Like, I don't know the last time I even thought about visiting one. But uh, it's been, you know, it's been a cool, cool uh, September into October, man. I'm trying to get, you know, get right on my fitness journey here. I'm still continuing with that. Okay. And everything's going along fine. So how's, how's, that, how's going that? with that? I mean, hey, I'm sticking to it, man. Like, for me personally, my Achilles heel is bread. Like, I love bread dearly. And it's been at least like 45 days with no bread. So that for me is like, you know, earth shattering news. You know, did the weight just just shut shut off completely? Cause that's how it was the first time that I was like, yo, maybe if I cut, I forgot what it was that I cut. It was like bread and rice. I remember there was one time I was eating like a lot of quinoa and that's all I did. No bread, no rice. I just ate quinoa, depending on how you cook it, your quinoa, you blah, blah, blah. And the weight, it was just like 20 plus within like, I want to say a couple of weeks. Everybody's like, damn, you looking good. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, I haven't. I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 if there's anybody that's a worser gym guy, please show them to me because I can never fucking stay on schedule. But just changing my, uh, just changing my appetite like that ended up happening really quickly. That happened to you? Yeah. So I'd say I'm down probably in a month's time, a little over a month's time, like 20. I'm like down 20. I was that's like, good. Yeah. 215, like 195 now. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I gotta, I gotta get back. I gotta get back on it, man. This is, this is for, for one a new month. So of course, thank y'all so much for tuning in for a new month. First episode of the month here for October here on the Black Print. So we thank everybody for tuning in. I gotta thank specifically the fucking printers. I know there's like four or five different spots that we have to thank y'all for now as we've tried to as we've tried to grow a lot of this. So thank y'all so much for those that are uh, 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 pulling up with another month of patronage on Patreon. Um, those that are pulling up and subscribing on YouTube. Thank y'all so much. Our Apple podcast subscribers. Thank y'all so much. Brand new, brand new experience for the Apple podcast listeners. Five dollars down, you get all of the Patreon exclusives that you get. The early access to the episodes that we drop each and every week. Uh, the B sides bonuses. You don't have to drop that five dollars immediately. We're giving a one week free trial to everybody that just wants to tap in. Tune into all the B sides for 2024. There's a couple of them that you could tune into. All of the ones that we've dropped for the year are on the uh, are on our Apple Podcast page and on our on our Spotify page as well. Uh, but one week free trial for all of our Apple Podcast listeners uh, that want to tap into B sides on the black print. See if you like it. There's uh, many, many behind the scenes combos that we have on B sides. Those are all available for you on Apple Podcasts. Spotify listeners, we told you we got you. If the feed looks a little bit different, don't be alarmed. There's nothing that we're adding as far as anything paid. We have specifically combined our main feed, so all the episodes that you enjoy for free here on the Black Print, along with our uh, patron episodes. So our B-sides, our early access, that's all available on Spotify. So you're going to see those mixed into the main feed. No need for a secondary feed. Once again, you can see all of our main episodes, all of our um, paid episodes on Spotify, and you can choose to do patronage on there as well. So thank you to all of our Spotify patrons as well. But there's so many, 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 many good things that we have coming for the month of October. Uh, we gave some updates on the Black Print Studios that was coming. Might have been a little bit, uh, what's the word? Optimistic. Let's just say okay. that. We got a little bit optimistic on our percentage that we had uh, with what we were working on. We're getting close, though. We're getting close. Uh, the remote days of the Black Print will be over very soon. Um, studios are coming together very well. Our audio is coming together very well, which has been very exciting. Uh, we just got to do some testing towards that to be able to ensure that all of that is going to go well. But uh, there's good things on the horizon. That's what I've been very very excited for. So thank y'all so much, of course, for another month of patronage. Um, thank y'all so much for tuning into this bonus. There's going to be a lot more that's on the way. Last year was a big year for us in the month of October. Not only did we have the changes with AMP, but we also had our incredible Halloween episode. I don't know what we're going to do for costumes this year. I say every single fucking year that I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do Nas and Belly. And then I fall out of love with the idea by the time that it becomes like, 
October 20th. So I don't know. <laughs> have you thought of anything that you have to tell? Uh, is there anything that you have to try and think of a costume for this month? Plus? Nah, and I haven't done one in forever, man. I don't even know the last time, to be honest <laughs> with you, that I've dressed up on Halloween. I really don't remember. I don't. You know, you think you know your best one. You know what your best one was the one that you were just like, yeah, I'm proud of the amount of of uh, of uh, energy that I had to put into getting all the pieces together for this. I think the last one I did it has been like years. I want to say it was I was still in St. Louis. My boy, my boy Q Hall. Mm-hmm. We just up as like the 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 robbers from Dead Presidents. I think that was the last <laughs> one. Like that was like elaborate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that was had to be like eight years ago. You know what I'm saying? At, at the very least. Was it a mask or did you do the literal face paint? We, 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 went, we went staying on him. We did the face paint. We did the face paint. Yeah. yeah. I forgot who did it. It was like one of the homegirls in the force, but it didn't feel yeah. stingish. It didn't feel like it didn't feel like sting. It's kind of close color wise. It, it was like I said, the face paint. We definitely did it. But um, yeah, that's probably the most elaborate costume I probably ever did. Like ever. Last year I was last year I was Drake. I'm not doing Drake again. That took two. Oh, that was so fucking stressful. Oh my god. For all the dogs, Drake was so fucking stressful just because I waited last minute to get the the uh different colored hair clips. I had to make oh. sure the pinks go with the pinks, the yellows go with the yellows, the greens go with the green. Never doing it again. And then I had to get uh uh I had to get the hair to make sure the hair was right and the hair was stressful. Then I had to do the Virgil jacket. Never again. Never again. Yeah. Let me just put some contacts in my eyes. Hope my eyes don't fall out and I can do Nas and Belly and just walk through a dark club or uh, walk through it. A... Actually, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where I'm, I don't know where I'm going to walk. I don't know where I'm going to walk through this month because uh, you just put me on to something that I did not know out here in Los Angeles. As I'm trying to find new ventures and new experiences out here in Los Angeles. Knott's Berry Farm was not something that I knew until recent. Yeah. So I just I don't know the first time I heard of Knott's Berry Farm, but I know it's um. I believe it's in the Cedar Fair uh, chain of parks. We know it's mm-hmm. on point here in Ohio, um, my hometown park, Kings Dominion in Virginia, uh, and a number of others. Kings Island near Cincinnati. Um, they got plenty of parks across the country. But yeah, I know about Knott's Berry Farm, but now they go into Knott's Scary Farm during Halloween. Scary Farm. Okay. I'm just not the... <sighs> I, I think I can gradually work towards being the horror type guy. I don't know if you're you're just naturally like, yeah, yeah, scary movie. Yeah, count me in, count me in, blah, 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 blah. I've never really been, I've, I've tapped in. And obviously between you and I, we've, there's, there's been scary characters within all forms of professional wrestling that we've sure. kind of got used to. But movie wise, I think the one thing that I did to celebrate this week on the first I watched a movie that I haven't watched since I was like, had to be at least six, seven years old. I haven't watched since six, seven years old. I watched Beetlejuice for a, a, a very, very long time. I don't know if it enticed me enough to watch the new one. I think I might want to go watch a new one. I think it got good reviews, but I've just gra- just naturally never really been the one to just, oh, it's scary month. Let me tap in and put blood all in my mouth and pose for the photos. Never really yeah. got yeah, I've never been that guy either. Like, I mean, I'm trying to think of like any scary movies I've watched I've been like legit scared of. Yeah, I don't know. Listen, man, like I probably had more nightmares about Cleo dying and set it off than more like watching scary movies. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm being honest. Like, I can't remember ever being like terrified. Like, Scream, I kind of found funny. And of course, you know, like the parody scary movie was hilarious to me, but um, hilarious. Yeah. hilarious. Um, you, what's the final destination, maybe? Final, final destination two, open and scene, maybe. But um, nothing other than that. I can't think of nothing like, I'm trying to think what was the one that I saw. Crazy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I mean, the new Smile came out. Smile came out. Smile. I think Smile 2 is coming out uh, either this week or next week. I might tap into that because the Smile, Smile was something that I saw with, uh, of course, with Justin um, uh, and Jess. Shout out to shout out to them. We we ended up tapping in with that on uh, how long ago was that? Two years, two years, two years ago. We ended up seeing mm-hmm. Smile. So I might want to see Smile 2 again just for the fun of seeing Smile 2. Um, outside of that, I'm, I'm just not resident evil seven was already a stress for me i don't want to play any more resident evils that was just just too much man just too much man i like my i like my horror just surface level so i don't know how much surface level horror that i can get today obviously justin already uh already i think he w- would have started already his 31 days of days, yeah for sure 
So um, for those that are listening as of right now, if you are listening on on Friday, of course, you're listening early as a patron. So shout out to you. Uh, if you are listening early Saturday morning, thank you all so much for bringing Plus and I into your living room or your car or your phone, wherever you play, uh, wherever you play the black print, and all of our B&D bonuses. Uh, it's going to be a big Saturday afternoon for us because we're getting ready for WWE Bad Blood. That's going to be something that could possibly be as scary as Smile or Resident Evil and evil because there is a very ominous original thank god no more blood no more red helena cells thank god original gray helena cell is back so there might be some horrific moments but i don't know just yet what is to come or what to expect because wwe is throwing so many different uh things that might happen guests that might come by uh attractions that uh they're just keeping being a little tight-lipped about so i think saturday or today specifically is going to be uh a big show are you gonna i didn't even ask are you gonna be out there in atlanta to, um today no nah, i wish i had tickets to that man i definitely would have pulled up but um the b shows now are so important they're so important mm -hmm. to wwe that they're now getting their own stores like you know they used to be only like reserved for like SummerSlam, wrestlemania maybe royal rumble Maybe Survivor Series even, but now like Bad Blood has a store in Atlanta. Wow, you know, like, I think it started today actually in Atlanta, and then mm -hmm. going through probably Sunday, and that was unheard of for a show that was considered, you know, once upon a time a B show. You know, started started out as an in your house. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just just shows you the power of WWE and how hot they are right now. That they're just making money hand over fist. And they're throwing many different Hell in a Cells on the WWE Vault page. So if you are as big on YouTube as we are, uh, they're throwing many things onto the WWE Vault. They've already thrown uh, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels, the 20, what is it, 97? So 27 years since the first Hell in a Cell. Uh, that is available on YouTube. It's censored. So if you want to see, if you want to see Michaels, uh, if I can, <laughs> I was just about to try and do the Jim Ross and say, Michaels cram! Just got cracked. If you want to see that, it's censored. They're just gonna go They're like pause. <laughs> <laughs> you need to see Michael's, Michael's on the floor. One so thing about the arrival of the Hell in the Cell, though, like it made like the regular old school blue cage in the WWF like irrelevant immediately. Like it was the next <laughs> time I saw it, I can't remember if it was like a No Way Out. It was one of those pay per views. I know for a fact it happened the Raw after WrestleMania 14 because that's when we got like that classic pose of the new DX and then the show with like new age outlaws, mm -hmm. X-Pac and Triple H on each like corner of the, of the old blue cage. But like maybe a year or so after they like transitioned to like uh, a steel cage, you know, like an actual a steel cage. That's, you know, like, a, like you said, the old gray steel cage mm -hmm. or regular cage match. But, um, but yeah, once, once Hell in a Cell arrived, that blue cage was just whack. What was more of an ominous jump to you? Blue Hulk Hogan era steel cage going into Hell in a Cell or Hell in a Cell going into, it's the design I like to call the Elimination Chamber. Which one was more ominous? Um, wow. I'd probably have to go Hogan, Blue Cage, and the Hell in a Cell. Yeah. That's more dramatic. Like, Elimination Chamber is a hell of a structure. And, it's the, and, and furthermore, it stood the test of time, which mm. you know, a lot of people probably think wouldn't have happened. So, I mean, shit, we're like... At least 22 years into the Elimination Chamber. I think what, 02 was his first year? Yeah, yeah, that's Robert Series yeah. 02. Yeah, so those are two concepts that, you know, have lasted long. And I mean, if anything, they had the blue cage just fell by the wayside. Thank God. I mean, one time they tried to reinforce it with, like, a steel, uh, you know, at the top. I was like, what the hell are they doing? Just get rid of that whole thing. I'm trying to think. They, they used to put like a uh, like a not in a barricade, but a little something up top to make sure it doesn't it doesn't maneuver around or jiggle around. <laughs> It looks like, you know, like the, uh, how can I put it? Like the steel that outlined the Titantron. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. On the top of like a blue cage one time that lasted, that design lasted like one time only. I want to say maybe breakdown 98. I got to look that up. That was, that was that up Austin Undertaker and Kane, I think. I, I want to say, I forgot. Yes. That's exactly what it was. It was the rock versus mankind versus, uh, Ken Shamrock. Ooh, and they okay. had that, um, let's see if I could find a good picture of the top of it here. But this is kind of what it looks like right here. Oh, that top. Yeah. It's not even the same color. What the hell, what the hell was it, that? It was weird. It was weird. <laughs> it was weird. But then, like, you know, by the time that, what was it, Angle-Benoit cage match on Raw, which mm. was in Richmond, by the way, and I'm so mad I missed it. 
I didn't go to that one. But um, yeah, this is what we got. This cage. This is like one of my favorite cages right here. That that cage. The one he did the dot. Oh, the one where Benoit did the dot. Yeah. Oh, that. So that yeah. has the structure, but at least it matches the. It's a much thinner. Yeah, the much thinner, gradier gray steel cage or silver steel cage was the one that also yeah. looked good. Yep. Yeah. For sure. There is there is something that we have to celebrate uh, as as we speak about Richmond, Virginia. Shout out to Richmond, Virginia. Man. We're a couple of days away. We're a couple of days. Uh, we're a couple of days removed, so we can't celebrate it on the day. We're still within the week, so it kind of counts. This past Monday, twenty five years, a moment that still stands the test, as still stands the test of time, and was a huge, huge moment for an eight year old Mark. Uh, for I want to say you might have been eleven, twelve. Uh, 12 12 yeah 12 for a 12 year old a plus september 30th 1999 a smackdown that might fall by the wayside for a lot of wwe viewers but for me and plus life-changing moment as the british bulldog which i wasn't the really biggest the biggest fan at at, at, at the time um fought triple h a person that i hated with every single bone i had in my eight-year-old body for the world wrestling federation title the rocks the special against referee and if we say something as easy as one, two, here's two now. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Counts <laughs> like three. Oh my god, that was an amazing Bulldog. moment to watch live, man. Bulldog gets his ass whooped. The Rock has a fresh black tee straight out of I don't even know. I'm not gonna try him and say it's from Target. It definitely looked like a designer tee, designer slacks. Um, goes Did y'all have the- Harold Pinner in Florida, like in the mall? Harold Pinner. Harold Penner. Harold Penner's man of fashion. That's that looks like he bought that fit directly from like Harold Penner. It was like they had now and later gators in there and everything. <laughs> like it's that type of store. Selling pimp gators in there? Oh, for sure. Definitely. That was all so. Harold Penner swag right there. Yeah, I don't think we had I don't think we had if there was a spot, let's just say Wellington Mall would have had pimp gators. No, I don't think so. Maybe Palm Beach Mall would have had. Maybe Palm Beach Mall would have had something like that. But that was way back in the day. Obviously, Palm Beach Mall is now Palm Beach Outlets. But for those that were in Palm Beach, Florida, like when the original Palm Beach Mall was there, and obviously I'm a little bit late, so I was important to raise in Palm Beach. But uh, those early 2000s, you might find you might find some now and later gators in there. You might find that store as well within there. Not necessarily where we were at, but you could probably find it there but he takes that goes for his people's elbow slides on those dead slides on those damn shoes those shoes should be in a hall of fame somewhere whenever that physical hall of fame is ready triple h please put those shoes in the physical hall of fame and does the people's elbow that changes my life changes a plus his life because he saw it live i couldn't imagine how much that was to see it live how was that it looked cool in the moment but did i know it was gonna be iconic you know i i can't say that I was just like, oh, whoa, you know what I mean? The kid, like, oh, wow. And it's just like, you know, it was cool. Even cooler than me, because like I said, I was an Austin kid. Yeah. So, yeah, Austin, like, showing up at the end there, like, I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I was popping. I was like, oh, like, mm. if that bother, bothers me, I can't remember if he came out to the crowd. I believe he did, though. I want to say he did after, because, you know, the show goes off the air with him kicking Triple H's ass backstage. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to say he came out and saluted the crowd and, you know, probably drank some beer or something like that. But, I really can't remember. I want to say that they're probably, I'm trying to think of a scary moment between between Austin and Rock. I don't think you were scared at a moment where you had to hear, here lies this Tisa trailer park trash. That was scary. That was scary for you when you seen Austin just off the off the thing, right? I, I, I rewound that that raw like a couple times that <laughs> night. Like I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit. Yeah, I definitely rewound the tape. Like the tape raw every week by that time, and I had to realize that he fell flat. So it was like a <laughs> dummy. You know what I'm saying? I had to see yeah. it like on the fifth rewatch because I mean, you, watching it the first time, you go to hell, and then you just see him go, <laughs> oh my god, and then you're like, oh my god, you know what I'm saying? He's, he can take this to hell with you. He threw the belt. Yeah, yeah, I was I was distraught for like 15 minutes, and then like I said, you had to find out on the following Saturday's live wire what happened. Like you know, mm-hmm. what I'm saying? it was no like WWF.com update that I remember. All I remember is Michael Cole saying Austin swam to shore, so we'll see if he's gonna be there this Monday. You know what I'm saying? Like didn't know otherwise. 
I've been I've been so accustomed now to just seeing blurred out hotline numbers on 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 Peacock just off how much ECW that I've been watching. I'm literally within. I'm not in that September '99 area that we were talking about as far as like sliding people's elbow yet. I'm getting close, a really really close to fall '99 ECW, but I just finished Living Dangerously. Um, Funny enough, if there was any wrestling promotion to scare you, I'm not really getting too scared of anything. Uh, nothing's like, oh, fuck, as, to me as of as of right now, because obviously we've seen more than enough documentaries on ECW to know like what the huge moments were and yada, yada, yada. I think the one thing that has surprised me most, and I'm like, I'm like, are ECW fans that fickle? Like, I don't, I don't really know just yet, but I can't really blame them because RVD has held the title, the television title, for now a year or so that when he fights Jerry Lynn and I hear new FHO, new FHO, I'm like, you yeah. sons of bitches. Y'all yeah. sell out RVD like this for Jerry. Yeah. I'm not going to say Jerry Lynn's not nice because Jerry Lynn put on a, an amazing match with him at living dangerously. But I'm just like, damn, that's how quick it goes. You, yeah, you have a year with the TV title. Granted, RVD is going to move into something much bigger. I'm, I'm sure I haven't really read. Uh, 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 when or where he gets the ECW heavyweight title, or if he gets the heavyweight title, but Jerry Lynn is is now definitely making a name for himself to where all of the people that are leaving ECW for a lot of money because ECW is clearly running out of money in certain cases. Um, to see those names of what is now being propped up by Heyman as the new blood of ECW has been very exciting. I can't remember his finisher. It was Cradle Power Driver, right? He just did the first package pile driver okay, to yeah. Tajiri. Tajiri's still wearing blue ass tights. He's not wearing okay. the black. He's not wearing the black yet. So I'm like, damn, when the fuck does he put on the black tights yet? Maybe he has to turn heel or something. Because right now he's still fresh, baby face, doesn't talk. I've seen him fight super crazy nine times at least. Super crazy <laughs> catches him every single fucking time I watch it. And I was like, damn, could Tajiri get a dub? So I'm waiting for Tajiri to get a dub. He, he's still he's still Yoshihiro Tajiri at this point. I yeah, know they're calling him Yoshihiro Tajiri, but it'll say Tajiri on the name, and I'm like, oh, okay. Heyman's getting is Heyman trying to tell us, hey, does this, let's call him Tajiri. Yeah, I'm about to say yeah, right? Because by the time he gets to uh, WWF, he's definitely just Tajiri, and then um, Austin calls him my favorite Tajiri. He's like Tajiri, <laughs> Tajiri. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> the great. William Regal days. Yes, yes, Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> Classic, classic moments, but everything that will be uh, on the post of Bad Blood and everything that follows Bad Blood uh, will be covered by us. Of course, you're going to hear from uh, you're going to hear from J5 next week on a new episode of The Black Print, but also tap in with us from another RNC radio perspective on the A show as well. Next week, you're going to hear everything from J5 and Meals regarding uh, the, the post. Well, I was about to say the post game. I'm in a very, very yeah. sports oriented mode right now. Uh, the post of Bad Blood and everything that happened from the excitement of this past week of WWE, brand new things that are happening in the CW, brand new things that are happening outside of WWE as well. All of that covered on the A-Show next week with J5 and Meals. Tap into that. that can, will can I be just say real quick that yeah. uh, J5's Swerve Strickland rant was one for the books? <laughs> like, that promo on Swerve, man. I First of all, I stand by everything he said, and I second everything he said. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, the hell was worth Strickland, but carry on. But my bad, bro. My bad. I, I just want to put that out there. I, I love every minute of that. You're not digging the syringes, bro? Not in the least. <laughs> not in the least. Like, Swerve is the fucking worst. I'm sorry. I he's, saw, a good, he's, a, he's a false prophet if I've ever, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, I saw a clip where he was just like, yeah, man, uh, back in the day, I used to go to Triple H because I was hitting a wall as far as my creative. And he was like, yeah, man, go to Sean. And Sean was the one who really helped me out. I was just like, I don't know if is, is this like driving a wedge between uh, for one. I don't think there's a single person in the world is going to drive a wedge between Triple H and Shawn Michaels. That's one thing. No. Two, no. Uh, let's just say from very reputable sources that that was not uh, that ended up a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a stretch of the truth, if I must say. Um, so I know there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, new deal. Uh, New deals, new exciting headlines that are coming out between what's going on with AW and uh, what's going on with the, their new deal with Max and so on and so forth. Who knows what happens in between that? I'm keeping my Max for many different reasons. Um, probably one of the few things Max and Peacock are probably two things that are never going away. But um, I will I will skip the ten dollar edition to watch uh, AW pay per views. I passed on it with the NBA. I did not want those few extra moments of inside the NBA for ten bucks 
on Max. Did not think it was uh did not think it was worth the was worth the bread. And who knows? Who knows what people what people decide uh when the uh when the new AW editions start making their way into Max yet. But such a thin skin promotion, man. They pro they plugged that TV deal no short of like seven times on the air <laughs> yesterday. I'm like, this is uh, one of the most like the most on target things I heard spoken about AEW this week was from uh, Conan. I was listening to a clip on YouTube, mm. and they they treat their audience as if they're all Patreon subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Like everything's very insular. Like they talk to everybody, like they know every granular detail about this show. Like, yeah. If you watch, and you know, of course you'll get bombed on by AEW fans. What you didn't know about that? Like you know, like come on, man. Like everybody's not as dialed in as you are to mm. what's going on. Nobody, everybody doesn't have the time. Okay. Yeah. So they. They kind of lose sight of that. Yeah, they they treat exactly all their fans, all their audience, entire audience, like they're all Patreon subscribers, top tier too, like the the highest tier possible. <laughs> the damn fifty dollar fifty dollar oh, tier, dollar tier, like the fifth the platinum package. Will Tradition. they uh will they do it in the same? Will they do it in the same speed as Excalibur and be like, hey, but the fifty dollar tier, please remember that Russell Dream is one week away from Saturday. Hear it? Was that a good Excalibur? I don't know if that was a good yeah, Gertner yeah. early. Uh, if that was a, a Gertner earlier uh, earlier in the show either. Yeah, no, I, no, you, that was a good Excalibur. All you, all you have to do is sell like an auctioneer, and that's it. You know? <laughs> do I have a 100? Do I have a 500? Do I have a 600? Do I have a 700? Like, that's it. That's it. That's it. Every, so, time, every time I see, I just can't erase, I can't, can't, can't erase it, man. Every time I see that mask, I just see surprise. Nigga. That's it. Every that's single it. time. I can't take this guy serious, regardless <laughs> if he said that or not. But I'm like, that alone? Never had my respect. Get out of here, you bum. <laughs> Fucking jackass. Well, there are people that are going to have a lot more uh, respect from a sports perspective, at least between uh, between what we've been watching. We are now in a mode where we're now in a in a season where it just feels like there's too fucking much to tap into on TV. It's always that fall period going into the holidays, going into the new year. WNBA playoffs are on right now. I'm just going to say. Shout out to the Aces. I hope the Aces can be able to clean this up. Three peats are fucking hard. I can't, I can't underestimate how how difficult it is when you have zero North American teams in the past 22 years not be able to three peat. Uh obviously I know the pain of not being able to three peat. I'm not gonna go into those details. Greg Popovic, I still need you arrested for turning off the AC. <laughs> I'll just let you know that right now. I'm not giving it up. I'm the not real I'm, peak game. The heat, the real heat game. I'm not giving it up, yo. I will scream this 30 years down the line. Someone needs to be arrested for game one of the 2014 NBA Finals. I don't know who. I don't know where. I, I, I'm sure there's photographic evidence. 2014 was what? iPhone iPhone 10? No, it can't be 10. Like 7, 8 maybe? I don't know. What iPhone? Guys, I'm about to look that up right now. What iPhone came out in 24? Was that 11? It was six. Whoa, I got that completely wrong. Six? It was six. Oh wow. So when was ten? What uh when did iPhone 10 come out? If that was oh, that was 2017. Bro, COVID has fucked up my <laughs> vision of, of time and how long ago things were so fucking bad. That was 2017. Wow. Jeez. Uh, would they be the first? Would the Aces be the first WNBA team to three P or like the Houston Commons did it back in the day or something? Uh, WNBA team to three P. WNBA teams at three P. To you know, I was just I was just hearing them talk about Glenn Taylor and how many championships in Minnesota Lynx had. They're like, hey, oh, man, wow. it's, no, it's no easy feat. Blah 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 blah. Three P's are elusive for a reason. WNBA history, only the Houston Comets. You're right, have oh, done okay. it when they won the first four titles from 1997 <laughs> to 2000. So they were like the, the Boston Celtics initially, or whatever the the Minneapolis Lakers of their time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. The first four, the first four though. Oh damn! Four that's, that's crazy. That's a that's lot. Cheryl I mean, right? Probably. Or I think Cynthia so. Cooper. Yeah. Uh, let me let me let me double, let me double, let me double think, check. Think Cynthia Cooper was one of those stars along with uh, Cheryl too. It was one of those. Yeah, man. I mean, I hope. I mean, I hope that they can. If not, you know. New stars, new things all being created uh, within the WNBA, and that's going to continue to go on for the next couple of uh, for the next couple of years. Uh, football wise, I thought you know is is just like that gif of Carmelo Anthony grabbing the basketball and getting ready to shoot. <laughs> and he was like, "Nah, let me just put it back." I thought I was with y'all with the NFL this season. I tried every every single time I tried, man. Try to be a Dolphins fan. I was like, "This ain't working." I made it to week three. Yeah. It ain't work, bro. I try to have an LA team. I had an LA team in mind. 
had to renege it. Those, those, uh, I don't think Rams, fans or Chargers. Rams or Chargers. I was gonna go Chargers, can't do it, bro. I was gonna go, I was <laughs> gonna go that? bolt up. I was gonna bolt up. I was gonna bolt get Ladanian Tomlinson. I was gonna scream that bit, bolt up. I was gonna scream. You would have thought I was a fan for 30 years in this bitch. <laughs> if I would have made it to SoFi, I was gonna get a Ladanian Tomlinson throwback. I was like, this is the only thing I know. I was like, I said, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. I do know the head coach. I do know the head coach at least. Oh, Harbaugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I do yeah. know Har I do know Harbaugh. I remember that Super Bowl vividly between the Niners and the and the Ravens. Uh the Harbaugh Bowl, yes. The lights out bowl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The lights, they go. <laughs> what a funny, <laughs> what a funny <laughs> Super Bowl that was. But I couldn't do I couldn't do it, man. And I asked you this last year. I asked you this last year plus. How have you been feeling with your Washington generals? And you were in an area where you were like, I'm I might. But I'm not exactly convinced just yet. How is it feeling now? What are we in week? I'm going to guess four. Going on five, yeah. yeah. Going on five. What's the temperature? Temperature is almost boiling. I'm not going to lie, man. We're, we're kind of back. We're back. We're <laughs> so back. we are still back? We're, we, I mean, I, listen, we win next week against the Browns, which is, you know, touchy subject because <laughs> I, I like the Cleveland Browns too. Um, but yeah, we win, man. We're four and one. And I think we have to get into we are so back territory because at this point, I can confidently say Jaden Daniels is the real deal. Like he's he's delivered, he's super accurate. Um, obviously, you know, he can run. Um, but we haven't had <laughs> we haven't had a quarterback like this. I mean, easily since RG3. Easily, mm -hmm. easily. I mean, that was <laughs> we took him under in one season flat. So let's just let's protect Jaden Daniels at all costs. Please. When the next week comes, are there going to be people breathing down your neck talking about why are you cheering for the generals in Cleveland? Is that going to happen? Or do you usually uh, have free reigns to just be like, listen, y'all know where I'm from. Yeah, I'm a car carrying member, man. That's my debit card. Like, I'll pull that out, <laughs> just throw that down the table. It's, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, man, I can't, I, I could never turn my back on the uh, on the Washington football team. I, I refuse to name the name. I'm, I, I can't bring myself to confidently say I'm a fan of the commanders. <laughs> you know, I can't say that. But, um, oh, I, I said I generals. Did. I got I got that wrong. I said generals is commanders. Oh, I, I, I thought it was a dig and I was going to take it because the, the, the actual name is ass too. So uh, I, I don't care. Well, who's generals I, though? How'd I fuck that up? Who's generals that just got changed? Uh, isn't that the team that the, uh, always loses to the Wash? I mean, to the Harlem Globetrotters? Isn't it the Washington Generals? I <laughs> swear they're like oh, they're like oh for a thousand against the uh, Globetrotters. <laughs> that is correct, but I'm thinking who else just changed the Generals? I can't be tripping. Hold on, Generals, Generals sports team, uh, Washington Generals, Washington Generals. Wow, I might have fucked it up. Wow, I, I might have yeah, fucked it up. Yeah, that's always the, the job squad for the Globetrotters, I believe. The pin me, pay me's. Of, ba of of basketball, the Washington Generals. Wow, I did not, I did not mean to touch uh, all all Commanders fans. Saw that was not. <laughs> I was I'm, not I'm good, not that good. Just I, I, I'm just I'm gonna just say that right now. I'm good, but not that good. That was not a dig. That was just me getting shit wrong as usual. <laughs> Shout out to DMV man, our guy DMV in the Discord. He's he's been riding nonstop with the Washington football team. Oh, with the Washington football team? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I mean, he, I stayed, he stayed down because I'll admit it. I left. Same way I was out of WWE when I thought, you know, Vince was just fucking it up and I came back when H took the reins. Once Daniel Snyder got the fuck out of there, that's when I came back, you know? I mean, it paid off. It was a choice that it was a choice that paid off. I think a lot of things sports wise for you are paying off very well because, well, depending on uh, when you are listening to this show. Uh, if you are listening early as a patron, of course, you're listening uh, today on Friday. If you are listening tomorrow on Saturday, this will be in past tense. But something that is going to save me as far as my own mental stability, the return of the NBA. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The preseason starts today on Friday. You and the NBA champion Boston Celtics are enjoying a little bit of Abu Dhabi lifestyle right now. Y'all got two uh, two out of three nights with the Denver Nuggets out there in Abu Dhabi. How has your spirit been of a summer, off a summer of celebration, new tats, new quotes, <laughs> new beards? How's it? How is how is the the eighteenth championship felt? You know, I learned last week that Jalen Brown is taking his rap thing serious. Like, he wants, like, DJs to actually play his record, the Just Do It song. Like, Jaylen you know, they... Jalen Brown, Just Do It? 
Yeah, he has a, a, a actual song that has been like actually in my inbox, like you know, with the rest <laughs> of the songs for airplay. It's like Jalen Brown, like I need you to like focus, bro. Like focus. This is where it's almost time for the season to start. You should have got this off like July. Okay. Yeah. It's time for you to get focused. All right. Um, I'm excited, man. Like I got a, a one of my one of my mentors, my big homie. He's really a Knicks fan. He's like you know over the moon right now. Like he's really happy about Cat being there because he one of the guys that couldn't stand Julius Randle and poor Julius Randle. He's uh I guess in the first presser I saw the quote I didn't see the video where he said like I feel like I was wanted going to Minnesota. <laughs> Which basically means like, yeah, they basically kicked me out of New York. The fans and, you know, team alike. Yeah. But um, I don't know. You know, I feel like, you know, the, the, the Knicks are going to be in Boston for the ring ceremony, which I love. So, again, you know, we can dust them off night one because, mm-hmm. you know, nothing like nothing, um, nothing more satisfying than like tempering Knicks fans expectations because, you know, it happens very fast with them. It happens so fast. Like, you know, one thing happens and yo, we back, baby. We back. It's the Knicks. Are you okay? You should have came to the Knicks. I get all that nonsense. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. It, it, there is some quit in New York. I'll leave I, I would be, you know what? As as much as I still have a little bit of pain from this past playoffs, I would actually be all right if I watch Celtics Knicks and I see the Knicks just humble just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. I know Atlantic Division is gonna be is gonna be an interesting story this year because y'all got the rap y'all got y'all got changes to the Raptors y'all got changes to the Nets um and of course the Philadelphia 76ers uh whether or not people are buying what's going on between Paul George and Embiid uh and and of course um uh, and of course everything that has been going on with Tyrese Maxey and the Philadelphia 76ers and the and the uh improvements and, and the, the, the the MIP nominations and all of that within that a lot of good things that are going on between the stories of what's going to happen in the Atlantic division but I think preseason why I think preseason is going to be able to kick off something that is going to make me so happy because for the past couple of years, I just feel like the NBA has been getting things right storyline wise. I think storyline wise throughout the season, it's been very exciting just to be able to tap into everything from the Eastern Conference, the Western Conference, the drama, the suspense, the suspense, the basketball. I think they're not going to I highly doubt that this would be a season that things fall back and uh things get reverted as far as like oh my god same thing that happens with the nba every single year this happens this happens this happens i think the new champions and the new faces that have been created between the past few years of new champions have done a lot for the visibility of the league obviously we're playing preseason games in abu dhabi i think vis- visibility is something that am silver is is definitely working on as far as making sure that uh nba continues to be a very very strong strong global game I mean, look at the media rights, man. I mean, we talked about this extensively um, over, over the throughout the year. Yeah. But um, when that goes into effect next season, and you're going to have uh, what is that? I guess three nights out of the week, um, you know, on broadcast television, like NB- across NBC and ABC, that's starting to get very NFL like far as visibility goes. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be massive. You know, when those rights kick in next year, that's it's amazing. It's almost like how uh, WWE has. Um, mirrored their distribution how nba had a streaming package a broadcast package and a cable package mm-hmm. that's exactly what wwe did i think that's damn near what you have to i think that's what everybody has is feeling like they have to do right now to survive as far as like big sports conglomerates obviously wwe is is now really putting itself into a huge huge area of being more of a sports conglomerate than it would have been uh if the story happened 10 years ago or so and obviously the nfl is going to continue to build the nfl is really going nowhere as far as their place uh, as numero uno in in the country but nba wants all, a little bit of a piece of that if not try to eclipse that and it's going to take a it's going to take a shitload of work obviously you know super bowl numbers are not anything that uh is going to be very easy to try and get towards but you know nba wise i think they're putting in uh they're putting in a lot a lot of good work in what is uh what is to come and i think miami heat wise i'm in a much different space i'm still going to uh uh I want this change so bad, man. I just don't think I could do it, man. I just don't think I could do it. Let me ask you this in the spirit of recut. Your mm-hmm. favorite, your I guess, uh, I'm going to ask here, and, and it's in terms of series. So your biggest sports win or team win as a fan and your biggest team loss as a fan in the NBA playoffs. Loss is easy. Loss is... <laughs> For me, it's easy too, but go ahead. Loss, 
Um, I, I, I really don't. I really don't think anything is going to be more embarrassing than June 12, <laughs> 2011. That was just embarrassing, man. Like, on, like honestly speaking, like you know, it's what like, did the kid say? What did the kid say when they're going off the court? You know? Oh, um. <laughs> That was Heat Celtics. That was Heat Game Five and Heat Celtics. When Paul Pierce hit the three, and he's like, "I'm cold blooded." I was like, "You son of a bitch!" I was so right. fucking mad. And the kid was like, "Yeah, good job, good game, good effort." Good. That's game, a classic good effort, Levitard guys. sound. <laughs> the next day, Stephen A. Smith was. Not only is this series over, it's over for the Miami Heat. You got to trade, but I was, I was so fucking mad. I wouldn't say I was embarrassed though. Embarrassment is watching Ian Maheen me <laughs> take on Chris Bosh and going crazy. Embarrassment is watching Brian Cardinal shoot like Ray Allen. That is what's embarrassing. I don't think there's going to be anything more embarrassing than what had happened on June 12th, 2011. And I've kind of got over it. Kind of haven't. I used to say the final, that final never happened. Didn't exist. I don't watch. I haven't watched that final since since it happened. No, I, I think I, I think I probably watched. I think I probably watched a little bit of Game Six, like the first two quarters, and I was like, "That's it. That's all I want." Yeah, I just want to yeah. see. I just want to see Eddie House or Mike Bibby <laughs> shoot a three and see the American Airlines Arena get a little bit hype. I don't want to watch third quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. No, thank you. I, I still you. see Dirk going jumping over. Like, if you're going to see somebody get emotional but not get emotional at the same time, that is what Dirk, like Novisky, did at that moment. Like. You could tell he was emotional, but on his face is like he's like stone still. Maybe he's in shock even that this even happened. I oh, still indeed. remember that. I was like, I was in shock that it happened, but I was just like, man, like I'm happy for Dirk somewhat. I know you, I know the circumstance was bad, but I, he just he did not display emotion like he thought he would. I was so oh God, it's so bad to just go back and think about it. When they were up 15 in game two, and Wade was just doing a little pose the with lean, the three. The lean. The, the lean and Jason Terry was like, we can't go out like this. And Dirt did some bullshit over Haslam, threw the bitch up, made it. Wade said, give me the ball, throws it over Dirt, falls, tries to sell eye contact to the ref. I said, it's over. It's yeah. over. Oh, yeah. my God. This is this is bad. This is really, really fucking bad. And it was only one one. It was only one one at the time. The Heat won game three. And then obviously Dallas wins the next three. But game six was probably just the most embarrassing one. Yeah. As far as as far as the best win, the yeah. best win has got to be either man, man. I honestly do not know. Here's the thing between 2013. Here's the thing with 2013 finals um, between Game Six and Game Seven. Game Six just had so much shock. I was just like, uh, it, it was lit. It was literally like. Time kind of freezing, but then it's not really frozen because everybody was drinking. There's alcohol involved. So now there's like a lot of raging heat fans that are just like going so crazy at the time that I said, I ended up watching it at a bruise room in like 2013. Um, and game six just had so much shock from the ending to the overtime game seven. I was pretty fucking shocked too. I would not necessarily say that's probably the one that, that gave me the most adrenaline in the veins. I'd have to say if I had to choose one, it's game five. 2011 second round between the Heat and the Celtics. I think that was the time that LeBron was just like, "Yeah, it's time to get these demons up off my chest," and just scores yeah. ten straight, oh, oh, ten straight over Paul Pierce. And uh, I'll never forget the call. I'll never forget the call. It was Kevin Harlan, the James over Pierce, <sighs> the biggest, the biggest three. And uh, Harlan goes, that might be the dagger. And LeBron's in the camera like. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and, the, and, the, and the alarm's going off. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just see him going, I've never felt more adrenaline. I've never felt more adrenaline. Like they zoom in on his face. <gasps> yeah. yeah. And just the, the alarm going off. That's yeah. probably one of the NBA's most underrated shots or things, th things that they don't put in video packages that I wish that they did. Oh, I remember that. I, I remember the zooms. The zooms hurt. I remember that. I remember that vividly. Uh, for me, easily best sports loss, 2010 Game 7. No <laughs> doubt about it. That so, had to the Ron Artest kiss of death is just embedded in my brain. I would never forget that, <laughs> ever. <laughs> ugly basketball, too. That game was ugly basketball. And it felt like we had a shot until when that the, shot. When the three goes in, does it feel like, Oh fuck! It's going in, or is it just the slow motion of? 
and um, watching the three yeah. go in like that. It, it's the latter. It's the latter. It was slow motion. It was definitely, <laughs> like, yeah, it was slow motion. Yeah, and, and then, like I said, when they come back, to him, he's doing the kiss of like the kiss of death. I was like, oh, it's over. Oh, it's not happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this is actually a wrap. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but of course, best sports win, 131-92, game 608. I was just like, wow. Because, I mean, listen, man, I was on an island. I love Allen Iverson. He's from Virginia. I love AI. But for me, that was simply too easy. Like, everybody in school is a fucking AI fan. Like, what would be like, AI fan like everybody else? I love them. I love them personally. But I wasn't a Sixers fan like Aaron McKee, Eric Snow. Like, yeah. rest in peace. Hold on. Rest in peace to Kimbe Mutombo, first and foremost. Oh, rest my God. How do we fucking miss that? Jesus Christ. Rest in peace to Kembe Mutombo, for sure. But mm. I wasn't exactly a Sixers fan. So the game, I was already like, you know, I like Paul Pierce, but the game that really made me a Celtics fan was when they came back against the Nets. I want to say game three, 2 Eastern Conference Finals, and they went up 2-1 in that series, actually. I remember this, too. Mike Breen was actually working for the NBA on NBC. That was the last year, the NBA on NBC. Mm. And um, he called that game. So from that point on, like, I saw Pierce be clutch in series that kind of didn't matter. Like, I saw him ice the Pacers at least twice. I believe in 03, he iced them. And then in, like, 05, he iced them, kicked them out this, uh, the playoffs, too. Like, mm-hmm. he, he was always a clutch player, even when he went toe-to-toe with LeBron uh, in the semifinals in 08, on the way to the finals. Yep. They had that duel. I believe Bron had 45. or yeah, Bron had 45 and Pierce had 41, I believe. That's, like, up there with, you know, the, 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 the fabled uh, Bird versus Dominique Wilkins uh, shootout. Yep. So 131-92, game six, an absolute drubbing of the Lakers. Um, rest in peace, Kobe. Of course, we love Kobe. But that was like the beginning of the face turn for Kobe. Yeah. He just you know, came back to the playoffs and all the, way back, all the way back to the finals now with Paul by his side. And, of course, he went on, he went on to win the next two. But um, mm. I love that night. We, we will always have game six in Boston in 08. The quotes that came after it, of course, very legendary. I'm not going to – I have uh, – I'm not going to say I don't have hate in my heart because I still do look at Jason Tatum with a little bit of a side eye. Obviously, he tried to have his own his own quote at the end of this year's finals. Probably a, a complete footnote compared to everything that has happened in t- Tatum's 2024 now that he's completed everything that he needs to complete. As far as news that um, almost fell off by the wayside, thank you so much for covering RIP to Kembe because I don't know how the fuck I missed that. Um, something that feels a little bit similar to Allen Iverson fandom. It kind of felt like that within these past couple of days, learning of the retirement of Derrick Rose. There's been a lot of different, uh, uh, support. There's been a lot of different support coming from actual NBA players, uh, huge NBA fans that watched him, obviously Bulls fans that loved him. Taj Gibson was like, yeah, I don't even think I could post it yet. Uh, I still feel very emotional. I've been crying every day. I'm just like, damn. But then I started thinking about, how many different teams that Taj and Rose have uh, uh, shared upon? Obviously, with the uh, obviously the Bulls, but also yeah. the Knicks. Um, yeah. There's a third team that I'm forgetting. Was it was it was it Memphis? I don't think Taj. I was going to ask you, was it Memphis? Uh, there's a remember. third. Te- there's a third team. I can't remember what the third team was. That Bulls team was gritty, though. I mean, when when I, I'm I'm pretty sure some like Bulls fans, especially from Chicago, look back like, man, he was special. Because mm-hmm. I mean, eleven Rose was special. All y'all I remember, iced him. y'all iced him, but you know. He was special. The main thing I remember, <laughs> all I remember is the fucking sound bite. Stu Gods goes, I got the heat in five. Mike Wilbon goes, you got the heat in what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lo and behold. Stu Stu goes, goes, right? Yeah, he goes, what's wrong? <laughs> I goes like, better open your eyes. <laughs> I forgot. Was it Rick Buker? Was it Rick Buker that was like, they're going to job the Boozer and Noah? I can't remember if it was Rick Buker that was like, yeah, we're going to job the Boozer and Noah. They let them 61 wins fool them. I think they they went 61 and 21 that season. Yep. 61 and 21. That game one where Taj Gibson dunked on Wade and I was like, ooh, it's over. Oh my God. I was like, okay. All right. I just remember. And that's the ball game. What a (laughs) comeback for the Miami. (laughs) <laughs> I have that. I have that damn near. It used to be embedded in my brain 100%. It used to be embedded in my brain 100%. As soon as you start the shh, <laughs> <still> God, <laughs> listen, that's Mike Wilpon. That's Rick Buker. That's the sound of all of Charles Barkley's rings when you put them on a table. It's classic, man. And then the music just comes in. And they you have out the phone. 
We have Al Sunshine. You have Al Capone. We have Al Bundy Grass. You have Al Capone. I forgot what the third one was. God, that's when I that's when I took notice of the show. Like I think the first time I ever heard about Levitard's show was the Tim Hardaway comments. But um, <laughs> that was, I think that was on Levitard, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, but when I really took notice of this show was definitely like the first rant. The first rant just made me a fan. You know, first rant that I remember was, "Woo, hey South Beach, open your legs." I was like, yeah, it's time. To- <laughs> what a different time in the fucking country, man. Yeah, you listen back to some of those old shows like, man, the shit they got away with is like, man, it's crazy. But never and happened. Is, and this is AM ra- this is AM radio, mind you. AM radio. Yeah. Not like it's late at night. Not like it's Howard Stern. This drive is time. drive time AM radio that's saying a lot of these things. Much, much different time. But I'm not going to I'm not going to put that on Derrick Rose's retirement. Of course, Derrick Rose means a lot to a lot of people out in the NBA. Uh, so big salute on that. I don't know what he's going to be doing. I don't know what he's going to be doing. Um, going to be doing next. But obviously, that class of that class of 08, class of 09 ends up being one of the ones that um, ends up being one of the ones that uh, damn near fading away at this point. I, I, we've we've spent a lot of couple of years saying, "Oh man, 03 draft is is just LeBron. That's it." But really, I mean, there's not too many names left going a, f- a few a few years back. It's it's Jimmy Butler. It's probably a couple couple others, but. We're going to get starting to get close to the point where you can start counting them on one hand, how many uh, that are left. And it might fuck you up when you start going on basketball reference and you start seeing some of the some of the uh, oldest players on a team <laughs> that were born in 1998, 1999. <laughs> and it's like, oh, fuck, damn, that's the oldest player that's on the team right now. That, that's going to be scary. That's going to be scary. And we're not <laughs> far from that. We are so not far from that. Not far away from that at all in sports, but hopefully, you know, Miami Heat wise, I'm not going to put anything in the air as far as what is going to happen this season for the Miami Heat. I already have positive vibes knowing that Jimmy Butler came back with his traditional hairstyle. I hated talking about hair, about Jimmy Butler throughout the throughout the majority of the year. I'd like to talk about basketball. I'd like to talk about wins. I'd like to talk about the advancement of Bam Adebayo. Um, many, other, many other names are going to be focal points for the Miami Heat. A uh, lot of mess, thankfully, that we were able to swim through with Tyler Hero that I'd like to put to the side and hopefully basketball wise things will be good with Tyler Hero. Uh I just want things to be good, man. Last year was pain. Last year was pain. Obviously, this is now in a completely different uh side of town. So I only have two basketball games that I could see for the year out here, which is gonna be tough because I'm pretty sure Raw's first Netflix night is in the Intuit Dome, which is probably days away from Lakers in the Heat, which I think is January 15th which is the day before my birthday. So I don't know what I'm going to do yet as far as when I'm going to see the Heat this year. I'd love to go to Into It. Uh, was not the biggest fan of all the stories that were coming about it, Into It. Like, hey, they do face scans. They're going to gonna make sure they're going to make sure that your body, uh, you're going to make sure that your body scan when you come through to make sure that you got a right ticket. Uh, There's going to be a whole bunch of different things coming in from Into It Dome as far as people that are watching shows, doing sports events. I'm really excited to still see it if Raw is in the Into It Dome. I'm, I don't know if that's 100% confirmed yet if they are in into a dome for the first Netflix night in 2025. Um, if that is, that's going to be exciting. But I've got to see the heat one way or another. Um, and I'm just hoping, you know, postseason wise, it's a little bit better. I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of doing this. Well, don't count them out. Seventh AC, they might get to the final, please. I'm I'm tired of them. I'm tired of the minor victories. I'm tired of the, I'm tired of the well, if we had. I'm tired. Of, I just don't want to do it anymore. It's been a couple of years of it. I just want to sit in that top three of the Eastern Conference, be able to be talked about as a true contender, not a tongue in cheek contender, not a, ah, well, you know, they made the finals as a seven seed. I want to be able to play this in prize. But you got to prove it to me. That's it. I, I got to say, though, at this point, I can't think of another team that's, that's uh, younger than the Miami Heat that has become a marquee franchise on par with the class of the league. Mm-hmm. Especially the Heat. Like, the, he, the Heat's been around since, what, 88 or 89, I want to say. And uh, 
yeah, three championships. Uh, we're talking what six trips to the finals at this point, maybe three or five, five or six trips to the finals. They yeah. uh, let's see, that's uh, 2023, about, 2020, 14, seven, or, or six. It should be, it should be six. It should be uh, 2006, 2011, yeah. uh, 12, 13, 14. Uh, oh, that's seven. That's yeah, seven. Because okay. he did the two with Jimmy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so seven trips to the NBA Finals. Yeah, man, that's a that's a marquee NBA franchise if I've ever heard of one. So, I, I, listen, I, I have faith that, um, you know, whether it's with or without Jimmy, the retooling is coming and the re-up is coming. So and I'm not going to be sticking the mud. You know, Summer League Championship, I was the one that said, hey, let's support, let's support minor victories. <laughs> let's support minor victories. I'm not going to be sticking the mud. I like it. Some of the young guys that are on the Summer League team are also on – the team they're in the rotation i'm happy about that i'm i know there's a lot of heat fans let's that's talking about youth 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 let's get these guys the things that they need to be able to perform with a lot of the younger talent that is within the nba and that is growing within the nba as of right now i get it i get it completely but you know there's also a lot of fans that are very 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 fucking hungry for another nba championship who knows what is to come with that but sports wise a lot of different storylines that are on the way between the NFL, the NBA, the WNBA, the WWE, and we're going to uh, you're going to see a lot of you're going to see a lot of the you're going to see a lot of the uh, feedback, not necessarily feedback, but a lot of the comments from A plus from myself and from everybody here um, on the Black Print Network everywhere that we have our social. So do tap in with us: YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Patreon. I think those are our four pillars. I think those are our four pillars right now. Google Podcasts went away earlier this year, so you know, rest in peace to Google Podcasts. But obviously many many different ways that you can listen to uh the black print and enjoy not only our main episodes of the black print but also all of our bnd bonuses just like this episode 68 of the black print will be out for you um next week uh whether it's early in the week or later in the week we will confirm to that with you on all of our socials so do keep uh, a lookout for all of those details of course for those that are tuning into the weekend of course enjoy bad blood enjoy everything that you have going on uh for the weekend the first week of october let's make everything um as beautiful as possible here uh for all of the printers and until then you will hear from us next week on another other another episode of the black print so for a plus and for myself we will see you next week peace <laughs>